If you want to hook up and use one of these with Logic Pro for iPad, in this video I'll show you how. For the purposes of this video, I'll be demonstrating how to connect an audio interface to Logic Pro on your iPad with this Audient ID4, but you can follow along with any class compliant USB based audio interface. Note that Firewire audio interfaces don't work with an iPad with or without an adapter. I'll also be focusing on iPads equipped with a USB-C port, as despite Logic still officially supporting some Lightning-based iPads, I really wouldn't recommend it. More info on that here. Alright, so setting up an audio interface with a USB-C port equipped iPad is actually really straightforward. In fact, if you have an audio interface with a USB-C output like this Audient ID4, you can grab a USB-C to USB-C cable, one actually comes with this interface, plug it directly into your iPad and you'll be good to go. A quick note on audio interfaces here, if you don't have one of these yet and are looking for an interface well suited to recording on an iPad, I'd definitely recommend this one, the Audient ID4. Like I mentioned, you can simply plug it into the iPad using the supplied USB-C to USB-C cable, and I really like this option because it's actually quite affordable and really well built. You don't see full body metal construction on pretty much any other audio interface at this price point. It uses the same mic preamps found in Audience large, proper mixing consoles, has pristine audio conversion with super low latency, advanced 32-bit AD slash DA converters, and despite its build quality, it's actually really portable, so you can just chuck it in a bag along with your iPad and record anywhere. Most importantly though, it's just dead easy to capture great sending recordings with it. If you'd rather use the standard USB-C to USB cable that some manufacturers still insist on bundling with their audio interfaces, or if you want to charge your iPad while also making use of an audio interface, you'll need an adapter of some kind. Unlike with Lightning-based iPads, you have far more choice when it comes to USB-C adapters, and there's no need to stick to Apple's official gadget. I personally recommend, and use on a daily basis, this Anchor Hub. It attaches to the side of your iPad and gives you the connectivity you need, as well as a built-in headphone jack. Remember those? However you get your audio interface attached, iPads with USB-C ports output enough power to power that interface without the need of any extra juice. You've attached your audio interface, so what now? Well, if I start here and select to open a fresh project, I can tap on audio to open a new audio track, or I can tap on the three dots here to drill down into some settings. I won't change inputs and stuff here as the settings menu you can access when you're in your Logic project properly actually gives you some more options. So I'll tap audio and create a new audio track. I'll then close the browser as I don't really need that just now, and then tap on the three dots at the top right of the screen and select settings. In the audio tab, the Auto Select Audio Devices option will probably be toggled on by default. This will automatically select an audio device, like an audio interface, automatically, and assign it as both the input and the output. This means that any audio you record will have to go in through the audio interface, and whatever you've attached to it, like a microphone or a guitar, for example. It also means that any outgoing sound from Logic Pro will go through your audio interface too. So if you attach headphones to your dongle, for example, you wouldn't hear the audio from Logic Pro when you play back your project or your recordings, etc. You need to attach headphones to your audio interface's headphone output, or attach monitor speakers to its speaker outputs. If you toggle Auto Select Audio Devices off, you can manually select from any available inputs. So you could listen through headphones attached to your audio interface, but record through your iPad's built-in microphones, for example. Or you could record audio using your audio interface, but listen back to your recordings and your project as a whole through your iPad speakers. A new feature added in iPadOS 26, there's this new Logic Pro specific menu that you can access when the app is open via Control Center. From here I can turn on the new global noise cancellation feature for the current microphone, 
It apparently blocks out ambient noise, which could be handy if you're recording in an untreated room or a noisy environment. What's more interesting is that I can select what microphone logic we'll use to record with. With the Audion ID4 attached, I can tap on the microphone menu and select it and the microphone I have attached to it as the currently active microphone. I can then jump in and change the mic to the iPad's built-in microphone on the fly. Yes, you can already assign inputs and outputs inside Logic Pro for iPad itself, but this control allows you to set your microphone at a system level. Very interesting, and it's great to see some macOS style core audio functionality come to the iPad. Once you're ready to record, make sure you arm the track by tapping the R button in your audio tracks playhead, and then just hit the record button and start singing or playing. Right, that's how to get up and running with an audio interface in Logic Pro for iPad. Let me know which audio interface you recommend down in the comments. And make sure you hit that like button while you're down there. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And for more info on some of the shiny new features coming with iPadOS 26 and how they affect Logic Pro for iPad, watch this video next.